We are very pleased and lucky to have our next guest with us because we almost lost him the other day. Chris Broussard, of course, our very own cover of the NBA from Brooklyn for the draft. But from what I understand, Chris, you're lucky to even be here, huh? Well, that, this story is going around that I almost died in the cafeteria. <laughs> is, is that what it is? Yes. I think, I think our guy is embellishing it a little bit so he can look like some great savior. Well, here's what it is, Chris. I was filling in for Sedano and Stink last night, and before you came on with me, Drew Brooks said, I was walking through the cafe at Bristol, and and Chris was choking on chicken, and I smashed him on the back, and I and I saved his life. So I, I said, can I bring this up on air? And he said, I, I don't see any reason why you can't. So I did, and he gave us the whole story last right. night. But the story that I was told is that you were really close to meeting your maker, and fortunately, uh, Drew Brooks came to your defense and, and saved you. No, no, no. I mean, look, I was, I don't know if choking is the right word. That's a little too strong because I could still talk. And but I was very uncomfortable. A piece of chicken was going down the wrong way, and it was you. It, it was weird. I could feel it going down incredibly slowly, <laughs> and it was very uncomfortable. It was like right in the middle of my chest, you know. And so I just kind of called him over. Hey, hit me on the back, and he was slugging me. I mean, I was starting to wonder if like he was upset with me. We had beef <laughs> and something was wrong because he was punching me, and I said, "Hold." Oh, Hit me with, after about four of them, I said, hit me with an open hand, all right? You're going to kill me one way or the other, you know? So, but, uh, no, it it was, look, I thank Drew for what he did, but I was not on the verge of death. Let's just put it that way. Well, we're happy to have you here. Now, I'm going to ask a question that I'm going to later on uh, bring up to our listeners and have them answer it. Uh, I think the Knicks made an unbelievable deal with the Mavericks. There's no negative to it. But if it does open the door for Melo to sign in Dallas, does it then make it a good deal? Yeah, I, I'm, I was going to ask you, I don't, unbelievable I think is too strong. It was a solid deal, I think, for both teams. I mean, obviously Dallas got a good defender and Tyson Chandler became better on that end. I like the Knicks getting Jose Calderon because he's going to fit really nicely into the triangle. Uh, Dallas Bear is okay. You know, you can, you can handle him. And you got off Ray Felton's contract. Um, so, you know, it was a solid trade. But, you're, yeah, of course, if it helps Dallas get mellow, then obviously it, it's counterproductive. But what I've been told is that it doesn't really affect it one way or the other. I've been told that, I mean, obviously, you know, Tyson was a great teammate for Melo. But I don't believe, uh, and, and I've been told that, it doesn't hurt the Knicks from Melo's viewpoint, and it doesn't help Dallas any more than, you know, they already had a favorable view in his eyes, so um, they still are that way. Is this the beginning of uh, the Phil Jackson trade a Do you think Shumpert may be dealt? Do you think they go to try and get themselves into the first round tonight? Uh, do you think that Larkin Calderon may be, you know, here and then dealt quickly? Like, like is just this the start of what Phil may do with this new roster? Well, I think, Phil, whether it's tonight or over the next, you know, few weeks or months, he's definitely trying to make big-time changes. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Um, he's trying to do everything he can. And this is what, you know, they really want to do it quickly. So you, you're right. You would expect the major movement from the Knicks tonight because they – Carmelo Anthony told them in no uncertain terms, you know, I don't want to – lose next year. I don't want to wait till 2015. So they are trying to make moves that not only make the team better, but also impress Carmelo Anthony. So tonight is a great opportunity to do some things. I don't know if they'll be able to, uh, but a lot of teams are ready to, you know, wheel and deal. A lot of teams are under the salary caps, which means you can make lopsided trades financially. Um, And a lot of teams in the lottery are looking not just for young players that can develop and become great in the future or good in the future. They're looking for players that can help them now so they don't have to be in the lottery for the next year or two. So I think there's an opportunity for the Knicks to make some moves. Um, So we'll see if Phil can pull it off. Again, I think it was a good start the other night. Um, But, yeah, they're going to try to do some things. Now. We're talking to Chris Broussard, our very own. He's in Brooklyn for the draft coming up. Our coverage begins at 7 o'clock on ESPN New York 98.7 FM. What are people telling you about Shane Larkin and the kind of player he can become? 
Well, he obviously, you know, started off well in Dallas, you know, showed some, some signs of, you know, ability, and then was basically glued to the end of the bench for most of the season, um, maybe the sec- two-thirds of the season, the last half of the season, whatever. Had an injury, too. Um, but I like – I like his talent. I, I think it's a great addition. I mean, we'll see what he becomes. He still has to prove he can be a legitimate full-time backup in this league, and who knows, maybe more. But I think he's got the tools. Now, we know he's small, but he's got the quickness. I think he's an intelligent player. Um, so I, I, I think it's a nice addition. Um, one thing I've heard is that uh, the Knicks, Ellington, who was in the deal, he could be moved. Um, and maybe more of these players could be moved. But I've heard Ellington is a guy that could be moved, uh, you know, part of another deal that the Knicks may have brewing. All right, let's move from the Knicks to the draft tonight, the overall general feel. Uh, I asked you this last night. We're much closer. We're less than two hours away from the start of this thing. Is this going to be an active night with trades? I mean, is Rondo going to go? Is Love going to go? Uh, you know, Lakers going to be active? Picks? Cleveland? Give us a little uh, insight into what we can expect tonight trade-wise. Everything's pointing to this being an active night, but you know, you never know. I mean, there have been times, I'm thinking trade deadline or even draft nights, where you thought there'd be a lot of action and there wasn't, and then nights when you thought it might be kind of quiet and it was wild. So uh, you don't know ever, but I do think the signs are pointing toward this being a big night. I mean, Cleveland, this late in the, the game, is still, you know, fielding offers for trades for the number one pick. You know, um, now I've been told recently by them that nothing is hot, that there's no trade talk that's really, you know, got big-time legs or imminent. But still, they're listening, and a lot of teams would like to move up and get that top pick. Uh, We've already seen three trades made in, you know, the last couple days, you know. So that tells you that stuff is brewing as well. Um, the, the Rockets, you know, they are trying to clear room for Carmelo Anthony and or LeBron James, or maybe I should say for LeBron James and or Carmelo Anthony. They traded Omer Sheik last night. They're looking now to trade Jeremy Lin. Now, can they do it tonight? Again, the draft is always a great opportunity to make moves. Kevin Love, I don't, personally, I don't think he'll get traded tonight because I don't know, I don't think Minnesota will get the type of deal they want, and they know they don't have to rush. Everybody thinks there's a deadline tonight. you got to trade him. No, you got till February to trade him. So I don't think they'll rush, but they're still talking with teams. They're still talking with Golden State. They're still talking with Denver. Uh, I'm sure Boston is still in the mix. So they're still talking. So, you know, there's a potential. Again, I said the signs are pointing toward a lot of activity. Night. Even the Nets. You know, and the Nets will deny it, and they've denied it to me, but I've heard from too many people around the league, they definitely would love to trade Darren Williams. Now, I don't know how many takers there are for him, not many. But I've been told they've offered Brooke Lopez to a couple of teams. And obviously his foot injury and his max salary makes it tough to deal him. But you wonder, you know, how how much are the Nets willing to, to make some moves. They want to get into LeBron James' sweet state, sweet states as well. And if obviously they have to be able to move those huge contracts to do so, be very difficult to do. But, you know, I think they're going to be very active. Billy King has always been able to pull a rabbit out of his hat with some trades. So those are the things that make it exciting tonight to see what happens. 